Hello, my name is Lisa Ma, and I'm joining you as the transportation planner working on the project from the consulting team, IBI Group. I'll walk you through an overview of the Bradley Avenue cycle track project. As you can see on this map, project limits for this work are Bradley Avenue from east of Wellington Road to Jelna Boulevard West. The project objectives include expanding the cycling network as identified in the cycling master plan to accommodate all ages and abilities, incorporating a complete streets approach to address speeding and safety concerns by helping to reduce operating speeds along the corridor, and enhancing connections to White Oaks Park pathway which crosses Bradley Avenue and provides access to numerous schools and green spaces in the area. The London Plan defines complete streets as those that are designed to support different forms of mobility. Complete streets also provide physical environments that make all forms of mobility safe, attractive, comfortable, and efficient. The project is currently in the design phase, with design anticipated to be complete in the fall of 2022. Construction is planned to take place throughout 2023. So why are we working on this corridor? In the 2016 Cycling Master Plan, Bradley Avenue was identified as part of the cycling network. Considering the current speed and volume of traffic along this roadway, cycle tracks are preferred over shared or designated cycling facilities, such as bike lanes, in order to meet the needs of cyclists of all ages and abilities. This is especially important considering all of the schools in the area. As mentioned on a previous slide, this facility will enhance connectivity to the existing White Oaks Park path and sign routes on Ernest Avenue. Throughout the study area, Bradley Avenue is classified as a main street and urban throughway with a posted speed limit of 60 kilometers an hour. There are many community destinations along the corridor, including White Oaks Public School and Rick Hansen Public School, with an additional three schools just outside the project limits. Large commercial plazas, including White Oaks Mall, are also in the study area. It's worth noting that this project is also in close proximity to the planned rapid transit bus route on Wellington Road. The corridor generally accommodates high volumes of through traffic and goods movement. It has four wide travel lanes, two in each direction, and a center median. No buildings directly front Bradley Avenue. The corridor is also adjacent to large land parcels of mid-rise residential complexes, commercial plazas, and educational institutions. Typical mid-block conditions along the corridor throughout the study area are represented in the top cross-section with two wide travel lanes in both directions with a wide boulevard and narrow sidewalks. The proposed modification for this cross-section is to provide one-way cycle tracks on both sides of the street. This would require minimal changes to the travel lanes and center median, although some minor lane narrowing might be required to fit the cycle tracks in. The sidewalks will also be rebuilt and improved near the intersections. This drawing shows a bird's eye view of the road design with the proposed cycle tracks in the teal color. As you can see, the cycle tracks would be 1.8 to 2 meters in width. The travel lanes on the north side may be narrowed to accommodate these cycle tracks, but keep in mind that the existing travel lanes are so wide that we don't expect the lane narrowing to impact vehicle operations. This slide provides an overview of the proposed improvements for the whole corridor, which include cycle tracks from Wellington Road to Jelna Boulevard West, protected intersection treatments to enhance cycling facilities through the intersections at Jelna Boulevard West and East Legs, Ernest Avenue and Montgomery Road. Intersection safety improvements are proposed along the corridor to keep bicycles physically separate from motor vehicles up until the intersection. These improvements aim to provide a high degree of comfort and safety for people of all ages and abilities. The photos here show examples of potential intersection improvements. As you can see, there are separate waiting spaces provided for pedestrians and cyclists to minimize the potential for conflicts. The proposed intersection designs include setback crossings, truck aprons to control speeds, corner islands, and additional features to improve the safety of all road users. 
Some of the potential benefits of this type of complete streets project are that an off-road facility provides a more comfortable environment for cyclists of all ages and skill levels. A separate facility for cyclists reduces the risk of conflicts between pedestrians and cyclists. Intersection safety improvements reduce the risk of conflicts between all road users. Minimal modifications are required to the existing travel lanes and center median, and transit continues to be accommodated along the entire corridor. Some tree impacts are expected within the project limits. We will employ a variety of techniques to minimize the tree impacts, which include narrowing vehicle lanes in strategic locations to pull the cycle track further from existing trees, replanting trees into wider grass areas where possible, soil bridging underneath the cycle track to remove impacts on trees that can't be moved, and there will be some tree removals necessary in some locations. This table summarizes the tree impacts expected along the corridor, which may change slightly depending on the final designs. 23 trees will have minimal impacts. These trees are within or near the right of way and mostly occur on the south side of the road. 24 trees will be preserved through a combination of soil bridging and root pruning. Soil bridging is used to minimize impacts to larger, healthier trees or protected species. 22 trees will be relocated. These are mostly young trees depending on their size and species. And finally, 12 trees will need to be removed. Although it should be noted that four of these trees are already in poor condition. The following measures will be taken to minimize construction impacts during the project. During construction, at least one lane per direction will be maintained at all times to minimize impacts. Advance notice of construction will be given to residents in the surrounding area, and construction hours will be limited to reduce noise impacts. Please provide your input or ask questions. Following the Public Information Center, the City will be launching a two-week question period for residents and commuters to ask any questions regarding how construction will impact them. Questions can be submitted either through the Q&A tool on the Get Involved page or by emailing the project manager at jgarden at london.ca. After this public information center, we'll review comments and suggestions from the public, stakeholders, and cycling community and incorporate them wherever feasible. We'll finalize detailed design plans in order to go to construction in 2023, likely beginning in the summer. Updates will be provided on project progress via the Get Involved page. Thank you for your interest in this project. We look forward to your input and discussion.